In a physical bricks or mortar store, all products are broken down into products and SKUs, and that is stock keeping units. Your store online should be no different. To illustrate, a product could be like Levi's 501 Blues if you're selling blue jeans, and this may be the particular product the store will sell, but this isn't how the store keeps track of price or reordering products or your stock count and so forth. This is all handled by SKUs. A SKU is the actual product item that a customer buys. A SKU in this case is size, length, color variations such as stone washed or indigo and so forth. This is where product options come in. A SKU is a combination of product options that are associated with it. You'll need these product options to allow your customer to select the size and color or any other defining factors of a particular item that they choose. To make this possible in our online store, we need to add product option groups, such as color, and then the options themselves, such as green, blue, black, and so forth. So let's go to the admin and see how that's done. So here we are in the admin. First of all, let's go to products for a moment and click on a product so we can see how the product options relate to the product. So in the details of the product, if we scroll down, you'll see product options. When we created this product, we related those product options, and these are the option groups, to the product. And then when we create the products, we choose the various different options like blue, green, or whatever that are associated with those option groups. You can have as many product options as you wish associated with any product. Some products may only have a combination of one, such as color. Other ones may have dimensions and color, like in the illustration of clothing. So it's good to add these ahead of time so they're available when you add the products. So let's go ahead and look at the options. First of all, we see a list of all the option groups that are available that we've added. Again, let's go ahead and go to color. You'll see the line item here. And if we want to edit it, just click on the pencil. Now we can edit the description, and we also can see the actual option items associated with this option group. And these, in this case, are the colors. If we look over here, like everywhere else in the database, if this option is already associated with the product, the delete field is grayed out, meaning it can't be deleted. In our case here, green is still available. So let's go ahead and delete that and see what happens. And there you go. It's gone. You can also add a new option. Just click Add New Option. And let's say we wanted to use green, so let's add it back. This description is more for your benefit. It's not shown on the front end to the customer. But sometimes options can be a little obscure, so you can kind of explain it to yourself so you remember. And then the sort order. Notice that all these here are just one. If you leave them all at one, they'll just be sorted in the order that they were added to the database. Or you can force the order they appear by changing this number. So go ahead and add the option. And there we have green again. So that's how we add and control the options. Now let's go ahead and add a new option group. So let's add an option group called flavor. And save it. Once it's saved, as you can see, we need to create items for that option. And we have to create at least one. Add that. There we go. So we've got a couple of those added. Now if we go back to the product, we scroll down, we'll see that flavor is now available in our option list. And if we're creating a new product, which we'll show that later, you'll be able to select which of those options from that option group that you want to use. Finally, as elsewhere in our admin, if we have an option we don't want to use anymore and it's not associated with products, we can go ahead and set that to archived and save changes. And you see it's gone from the list, but if we want to bring it back later, we can go to the view archive list and we can reactivate it. There we go. Oh, and by the way, see this message up here? That will continue to appear until we change our admin password from the default, which is just admin, to something that we would want to have on our live site. So when you see this during testing, if you want to get rid of it, just click on the red X and it goes away. But don't forget to change your password.